So, mm -hmm. all right, viewers, we have Mr. Vinamra Longani with us. He's head of operations, Serene and Co., and a noted aviation analyst. And he will get us through a simple breakdown of the whole controversy regarding the 5G rollout in US and how there have been fears of aviation disruptions. From what we know as of now is that a large set of US airlines wrote an emergency letter stating that if 5G technology, a specific 5G technology, if the C-band is deployed near runways, then it will lead to massive disruptions. It would interfere with devices near airports and it would lead to thousands and thousands of passengers stranded. Now, this obviously has led to a lot of panic across the world because India are being the next big stage for the tech-driven economy. People are obviously curious about what's going on and how will it affect an economy like India, which is still growing. And when we roll out our 5G, what are the consequences it will have and what do we need to do? But we also understand that this is a specific band. It is the 5C band of the 5G technology. So if you could help us explain what exactly is the C band of the 5G? Well, at the outset, thank you for inviting me, Shitij. Uh, it's a pleasure. Now, yes, uh, as you rightly said, this issue pertains to the C band spectrum of 5G and the possible interference that it may have and the, ri then the risk that it poses to aircraft per se. So, you know, the 5G rolling out globally does not really impact the aviation industry adversely. So let's just get that right first. I mean, I can tell you for a fact, there are 40 plus nations that have deployed 5G technology and, and, the, and, and the aviation industry has faced no issues. I mean, yes, I must caveat there that, you know, in some countries, 5G hardware close to the airport operates at lower power levels. And in some countries like Canada, for example, you know, they've mandated large buffer zones around their airports, but overall it's not been an issue. Now, I mean, closer home, if you look at Dubai, Dubai airport is 5G enabled and Dubai airport is home to the world's largest long haul airline, which happens to operate uh, the largest fleet of A380 aircraft and also the largest fleet of Boeing 777 aircraft. So to circle back to your question, uh, this is very unique to the United States, this issue, and because it pertains to the C-band spectrum of 5G. So what are the fears that are connected to the C-band? They have been auctioned. Now the rollout has been deferred twice now. It was deferred earlier. Now, again, mm -hmm. after the airline's warning and writing an emergency letter, it's been deferred again. So what exactly are the fears that surround this particular band of the 5G technology? Because the C band alone does not constitute the entirety of the 5G spectrum. It's just a particular aspect of the 5G tech. So what exactly are the fears that surround? We have heard that it will hit, uh, it will hit altitude devices in airplanes. It will interfere with other devices. And it will also affect low visibility operations as far as the US is concerned. So what's the whole deal? How does this work? Okay, so I'm, I must uh, put out a disclaimer there. I'm not a flight safety expert, but I can explain this to you. Essentially, all aircraft have something called a radio altimeter. Now, this, this critical sort of component uh, is used uh, to establish the distance between the ground and the aircraft and, and, is, and is key for low visibility operations. Now, mm -hmm. it is alleged we don't know for sure. It is alleged that the C-band 5G rollout potentially may impact certain aircraft which have certain uh, radio altimeters. And, and that is essentially why these restrictions have been put in place by the FAA and, and, and you know, aircraft manufacturers like Boeing. So that essentially is the crux of the issue. So is it something to, that they should be really worried about in terms of safety because aviation disasters tend to be really awful? So how, how dangerous, what's the magnitude of this problem as far as US is concerned? You see, uh, having been an industry stakeholder for, for, for the better part of a decade and a half, I can tell you safety is paramount uh, in the aviation industry. And, and that is the, that's the most important sort of uh, aspect of the industry. So safety is never, sort, never compromised. And, you know, uh, the proof to that is these restrictions that have been put in place have been put in place because there is allegedly a risk out there, you know, and, and, and how it sort of all transpired was Boeing put out uh, a notification to uh, its <coughs> Boeing 777 and 747-8 operators to not to operate to US airports, which 
starting today have been 5G, uh, where there has been a 5G rollout uh, using the C band. So, uh, I mean, uh, everybody can rest assured that safety is always going to be the number one priority for any airline or any in aviation industry stakeholder. And that is why we are where we are. Right. But is it something specifically to do with the wide body aircraft? Because that has been another bone of contention that it's the wide body aircraft specifically that are more prone to the dangers supposedly posed by the C, uh, by the C band or 5G. So what's to do with wide body aircraft specifically? You see, it all started with Boeing writing to, like I said, uh, air aircraft, Boeing 777 and 747-8 wide body aircraft operators and, and asking them not to operate, at least for the time being, to airports in the US where this is being rolled out. Now, that resulted in uh, well, a vast majority of cancellations and also mass hysteria to an extent, which I am glad you are trying to address through this because uh, it's not as if wide body aircraft aren't safe. I mean, I'll give you an example. The FAA on the side has been clearing aircraft to operate at these aircraft, at, the, at these airports. And I can tell you the Boeing 747-400, uh, that's been cleared. The Boeing 767 has been cleared. Uh, among other Airbus wide body aircraft, the A330, the A350, these have been cleared. And the A380 also seems to be operating to the US. So, you know, uh, there are really no concerns as such around wide body aircraft. All of this is being done to ensure that even if there is an iota of doubt that this C band spectrum may impact uh, aircraft operations in order to eliminate that. So uh, it's extremely safe to fly. I mean, flying is the safest mode of transport, and, and I do not see that changing anytime soon. That's heartening to know because one thing that stands out is that you will see, you, of course, there'll be many, many more road accidents than air disasters. But the fact is that when you compare the fatality toll and the death count, you just realize that air travel is way safer than all other modes of transport. So that's the most reassuring part, that the safety is still at the forefront despite all the concerns and fears surrounding this whole 5G this whole madness that's going on in US because airlines clearly want of chaos and chaotic disruptions. Now, those were really strong words that really worried people because if major airlines can say chaotic disruption, those are really strong words. But then they also flagged that, you know, they'll have to upgrade their hardware, they'll have to upgrade the devices, there'll be new certifications that will be needed. What's the economics of this? Well, I'll be honest with you, hardware upgrades, uh, if required, and once a certain over a period of time, do cost a small fortune. And there is not just the cost of the hardware, there is also the availability of the hardware, as and when it's available, only then can it be upgraded. And you know, you need to ground an aircraft, you need to have uh, MRO maintenance facilities, which are available, you need to ground the aircraft, there is ground time, so there's costs associated there. So it's, it's, it's very hard. At this point in time to uh, to say how much this might cost the industry but uh, it, it, the costs would obviously be in the billions of dollars and also something else that one must really keep in mind is you know the cost of these disruptions uh, the all these flights that aren't operating to the us the airlines uh, the airlines are obviously out of pocket these were flights right. that were sold to passengers and they would they, they would end up either you know uh, either sort of reaccommodating these passengers or giving them their money back or putting it in a shell for later. But at the end of the day, uh, and when you have an asset like an aircraft, you would want to use it as much as possible so sure. that you know you can you can gain as much revenue out of it. So, so that also is, is another aspect which is very troubling for the industry, given that you know we've we've not even stepped out of the whole pandemic situation. Things were only just starting to get better, and now we've got Omicron. Now we've got this little fiasco in the US. So uh, it, it's 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 actually quite heartbreaking from an industry perspective. And yes, of course, and what people tend to forget is that, is that it's just not passenger flights that are in question. There's FedEx who is signed to the letter. There's huge loads of cargo shipment that goes throughout the world. It's, it's a globalized world, whether you like it or not, it's interconnected. And then of course you have crucial medical aid and supplies. You have vaccines, you have protective gear, which is going all across the world. So the biggest concern apart from the passenger disruption is also that these supplies, which are so crucial, shouldn't get stuck right now. 
Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, we always look at uh, our airlines as, uh, you know, a- as organizations that that ferry people, you know, there, there is another deck below where there's cargo that's carried on an airliner uh, or, or, uh, in addition to passengers. So, yes, global supply chains may get disrupted because of this. And, and at the end of the day, what that means is, you know, people will have to wait longer for critical sort of uh, medicines or pharma or or, or, or even day-to-day goods which are shipped from one part of the other uh, uh, to the other and by ship I mean flown by air. So as of now it does seem as a yet another stopgap measure that they have deferred it again but eventually as an aviation analyst what's the way that you see out like eventually they will have to extend it sooner or later so will the airlines seed ground and switch to upgrades or will there be a statutory change in US what's the way out of this crisis because this impasse cannot stand forever. It has to change because the rollout has been deferred twice now and the auctions have been given around one year back. Now the spectrum has been allocated. There's trillions of dollars involved on that side too. So what's the final way out? You see, I think it's going to be a bit of everything. Uh, you know, uh, the, the the spectrum sort of the telecom companies may have to sort of like, you know, like some other countries power down some of their hardware around the airports. They may, they may look at the U.S. government uh, in order to sort of ensure that things go back to normal. Uh, they may, they may look at setting up a buffer uh, depending on, uh, you know, the severity of this issue at hand. Simultaneously, like I said, you know, the FAA has been approving aircraft types. Uh, and I mean, one would hope that, you know, that process is expedited and, you know, more aircraft are approved. So, so I mean, it uh, unless I mean, I don't really have a crystal ball to tell you uh, what ultimately is going to happen. But yes, I, in my opinion, all parties will have to work together to make sure that this this disruption uh, is minimized going forward. But the main bottom line, the main crux as of now, is that the problem is essentially U.S. specific, and because India is a data yes. crazy nation, and India is a nation of youngsters. So what we tend to look out is how how it will impact us and what we should do. So the main takeaway of this from what I learned from you is that this is clearly US specific. 40 countries have rolled out 5G. It's not been a problem. It's just this particular C band and the problem remains US specific. So there's nothing that India should be worried about going ahead, deploying more tech, making new airports and making more regional airlines. Not at all. We're, 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 on the, we're on the path to greatness in this country. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, uh, that we will grow into being uh, one of the, uh, well, we are, we are one of the largest civil aviation markets already. But uh, given that only about 4% of people fly in India, we are well on our way to be the world's largest aviation market, uh, hopefully in my lifetime. And it's really reassuring that safety still stays. No matter what happens, there can be concerns regarding tech, there can be concerns regarding policy making. But what really stands out is that nobody is letting their guard down as far as safety is concerned. So all the flyers can be really at ease and not worry about anything that's going to happen to the safety dynamics of flying. Absolutely. There is absolutely no reason to worry about at all. You know, there are, uh, you know, getting an aircraft off the ground is like a well, well choreographed uh, so, uh, ballet and, and, and safety is paramount at every step of that. So, you know, you can rest assured that uh, uh, safety would never, ever be compromised. So this should basically make our young Indian viewers, the digital viewers, really happy that they are safe, the safety is intact, and the problem is not India-specific. Absolutely. Well, uh, like amidst all the brouhaha, we really needed someone to clear the air, and we are glad that at least we got you, an analyst, to just clear and dispel all the rumors. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure, Shidej. Thank you.